So welcome to the master yoga class. We are going to be talking about how Ayurveda helps with uh, migraines and headaches. So I see a lot of people with headaches and migraines. And you know what we typically do is take ibuprofen and stuff like that. But I just want you to know that there are root causes to why we get headaches and migraines. So I decided that I would address it because it's kind of a common thing that happens with people. All of a sudden my dog needs extra attention. I don't know why. But anyway, so I took a bunch of notes. I did a bunch of like extra research to address it. And I just wanted to go over what we do in Ayurveda to manage headaches and migraines. So first of all, the thing about Ayurveda is we're always looking at what's the root cause? What's the root cause? The symptom is only really gonna tell us what are the elements at play. So if there's dryness involved, that means that it's a vata symptom, right? If there's heat involved, that means it's a pitta symptom. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the elements. So vata is made up of ether and air, pitta is heat. Now, if kapha is involved, it means typically that there's mucus, congestion, stagnation. That's what's involved. So what we want to do is we're always looking at addressing not just the symptoms, but the root cause. Always, always. So headaches and migraines can happen for a lot of different reasons. Depletion, indigestion, constipation, colds, flus, poor posture, believe it or not. You can walk around with poor posture and end up giving yourself headaches. Um, suppression of natural urges. And that mostly relates to urination and not going and eliminating your stool, okay? When you need to go, you need to go. You, those are natural urges and those cause imbalances if you do not allow natural urges to be released when you are feeling them. Um, also muscle tension, mental conditions such as nervousness, worry, anxiety, anger, and also high blood pressure. Migraines specifically can be caused by heartburn. And also there's congenital issues that factors and weather, climate and barometer changes can also aggravate migraines specifically because migraines, there's more of a pressure. Um, also too much heat, pressure, stiffness, and I, like I said, tension, and then an injury. So if you have an injury, sometimes injuries can cause headaches and migraines. So I wanted to break it down and talk about for the specific doshas. For vata, the, the typical symptoms are anxiety, worry, depression. So that depression is usually hand in hand with overwhelm because vata depression is very different from kapha depression. Okay, vatas, ether, air, that's a completely different depression than uh, earth, water depression, which is usually from, you know, just lethargy and being melancholy, stagnation. Um, so dry skin, um, constipation, and extreme pain. So those are some of the root causes of, of why you get a migraine or a headache as a vata. So pitta, migraine or headache symptoms are going to be red complexion, eyes, light sensitivity, burning sensations, anger, irritability, and nosebleeds. Um, often those particular symptoms, the root of those is usually in the liver and blood toxicity. So that means you need to do like a liver cleanse. Um, kapha, a dull headache is usually how it shows up, but it's from heaviness, fatigue, nausea, too much phlegm, vomiting, excess of salvation. And also there's usually respiratory disorders that are the root causes of all those particular symptoms. So remember kapha is water and earth. So if we break down the treatments of how you would address each one of these, and by the way, we're all complex. Most of the time I will tell you it is, it is people come in and they're a vata and a pitta, like they have both of the symptoms and I have to address both of them. 
And it gets even more complex when it's a vata and a kapha imbalance, or you're a kapha with a vata imbalance. I mean, it is, it can be complicated. So the, the treatments for the doshas, for vata, we would use an herbal blend a formulation called triphala as a purgatory, um, like a purgation, sorry. And also Jatamamsi, which I've done a talk on Jatamamsi. Jatamamsi is an incredible herb. Um, bromine, which is calming for the mind, and then lots of rest. And the, the treatment that is the best for all the doshas is Shiradhara. So Shiradhara is the hot oil on the forehead. And if you haven't had that done, it's through the roof, incredible. Like people get it done and they can't even describe it. It's so incredible. So Shiradhara, Shiradhara is one of the treatments that will help heal the vata, migraine, and headache. Okay. Pitta, you want to use purgatives such as aloe vera, rhubarb, and fennel, and then liver cleanse and herbs like sandalwood. And you take sandalwood oil and you can put it on the forehead at the third eye, on the temples, on the heart, and then under the nose. And then it kind of like cools things down for Pitta. Walks in the full moon because it's cool. By water, because it's cool. And also flowering gardens, because there's more moisture. That reduces Pitta causes um, the pit of migraine. Okay. So overexertion, heat, and sun for pittas absolutely need to be avoided. And also, again, shirodara, the treatment of shirodara is extremely beneficial for pitta. Okay. For kapha treatments, you want to do herbs like trichotu. And I would not do any of these these therapies without the guidance of an Ayurvedic doctor or practitioner, okay? But I'm just telling you how Ayurveda approaches these. So kapha, the herbs that are used for headaches and migraines is trichotu, bromine, and tulsi tea, which is fantastic, by the way. You can get that at Whole Foods or Sprout. Delicious. Um, inhaling eucalyptus oil, vomiting, um, exercise, nasal snuff, which is a nasal treatment that we use in Ayurveda of ginger and pepper, and then shiradhara again as a treatment. So headaches and migraines that are caused by coughs and colds and flus and allergies, you want to use herbs that are decongestant and expectorant type of herbs. For vata and kapha, there's usually an excess. That means that there's too much vata in the system too much kapha in the system. So we need to remove those. And you wanna use herbs like ginger, pepper, licorice. And also you can either ingest them or you can use them, use the herbs as a snuff up the nose. And we're not very familiar with that in the West, but it's actually quite common in native cultures. Um, and in India, like a lot of the Ayurvedic doctors that I worked with that came over from India, they were all using the, when we did, when I did the treatments with them, they all use the snuff, all of them to help people. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, migraine specifically medicated oils or ghee you can use. So for migraines, the medicated oils and the ghee is the, there's certain herbs you want to use like guduchi and bala ashwagandha um, with heat. And also you can use it as a snuff up the nose. Long-term healing. So long-term healing for migraines includes a jam, an Ayurvedic jam. It's actually quite popular. I learned about it when I was doing yoga training way before I got into Ayurveda and it's called Shavan Prush. It's delicious. And it is going to nourish and rejuvenate the system. So it's for people, it's for depletion. So Shavan Prush is a jam that you can get at the Indian store. It's everywhere. Um, Brahmi, ashwagandha, and also shiradhara. So shiradhara by far across the board is the number one thing that can really, really help with migraines and headaches. Also, another cause is lack of sleep, by the way. 
overwork, stress, worry, poor digestion, muscular tension, heartburn, high blood pressure, and an imbalance of Vata and Pitta symptoms that are in excess. So those particular symptoms that I just talked about, those are all Vata Pitta symptoms, right? That's how they get excess. They go out of balance and then you end up having all these problems and it causes headaches. Um, I want to talk about tea a little bit because a lot of people drink tea. So in Ayurveda, tea can actually help with migraines, but you have to be careful not to use any artificial flavored teas because they can cause an imbalance and actually cause insomnia. The other thing that you have to be careful is you never leave your tea bag steeping because it oversteeps the tea leaves and makes them bitter, which if you have an excess of kapha in your body, that's okay because it's going to dry you out. But if you're a vata and a pitta constitution and you're leaving your tea bag in and it becomes bitter, you're drying out your body. That's what you're doing. It's like an astringent you're, or a bitter. You're pulling out, drying. It's making you dry. You're pulling out of the body. So it's really important to be really careful with tea, but tea can actually be very nourishing to help with headaches and migraine. As long as you're doing it and pulling the tea bag out after about four minutes, okay? Very nourishing all day long. Um, and so the tea is just so you know, they're, one of the things that they're doing is they're countering um, hyperacidity. They're also helping with heat, damp, and then sun exposure conditions. So tea can be very helpful. You don't want to overly brew them. Okay. So the nasal therapy is something also that we use in Ayurveda. I use a neti pot every day, but also there's snuff that you call, and then they have medicated oils, which is a form of snuff that you put up into your, your sinuses to nourish the tissues. So those are uh, another form of therapy. And the reason why the nasal therapy is important is because in Ayurveda, diseases of the neck and the throat and the head can be relieved through those nasal therapies. So nasal therapy helps to heal like shoulder, neck, throat, stiffness, all of this stuff in here that happens for a lot of people. So um, that's something to consider if you're interested in, you know, meet with me. Um, it's great for relieving stiffness as well. So if you just get stiff and a lot of tension in your neck and your shoulders, that the nasal therapies help with that. Okay. Posture, you guys, that uh, I talked about it a little bit really pay attention to your posture. I had a gal come in a few weeks ago and she was having excruciating pain in her body. And it's because of how she was holding it. It all came down to ergonomics. Okay. So how you hold yourself is so important. And yoga helps with that, by the way. So the postures that we're going to be focusing on tonight in our yoga practice are shoulder stand and plow. And the reason why is because every time we do shoulder stand, you will always hear me say, and shoulder stand heals all ailments from like the chest up, all right? So shoulder stand helps to heal any kind of imbalances that are going on in the neck and the head and the shoulders and upper chest. It's so it's very, very beneficial. Specifically, it helps with um, abdominal organs rejuvenates them. Actually, I, I wrote a little list here. It helps with the spine and heals back pain, hand cramps. Um, it helps the shoulders and the elbows. It helps with arthritis and asthma, depression, sciatica, um, sexual debility, wrinkles, rheumatoid arthritis, menstrual disorders, abdominal pain, gas, and headaches and migraines. All right. All right. So also the other thing too is pranayama. So pranayama, remember, is breathing exercises. So breathing exercises is another thing that you can do. So a lot of times people don't realize they have imbalances in their breath. So starting to work with just a one-to-one -one breath where you even out your inhale, even out your exhale, you start smoothing them out. That 
will start to help you heal what's going on in your body. Because as you start breathing properly, properly, you bring in more vital force. So you bring in pranic uh, vital force, prana, and it increases your prana flow. So then the force is now, the energy starts moving better through the body. Um, pranayama specifically helps with hiccups, cough, headaches, migraines, eye and ear pain, respiratory, digestive problems, asthma, wheezing, indigestion, hyperacidity, mucus, fat, and obesity. Wow. Breath work does all that. Anyway, so from there, we are now going to just move on to the yoga practice. And our yoga practice is going to be a practice that enhances what we just learned. So it is going to be around how to heal the upper body here, how to heal the head and neck and shoulders with our yoga practice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this.